Nigerian army generals are corrupt. They steal weapons and sell to terrorists, says a report by the London-based paper, The Economist. And also, President Muhammad Buhari considers state pardon for Ken Saruwiwa and other Ogoni leaders. This is Plus Politics, and I am Usao Gye Ogbonwa. A London-based magazine named The Economist has blasted President Muhammadu Buhari and the Nigerian army over the poor state of the country. In its editorial titled The Crime Scene at the Heart of Africa, the, part, uh, the paper rather stayed, uh, stated that the Nigerian army is filled with corrupt generals and is unable to protect the country from the mutation violence. It also alleged that many of its soldiers are ghosts who exist only on the payroll and much of its equipment is stolen and sold to insurgents. It also described the government of President Buhari as high-handed, adding that he has also failed to tackle corruption. The Nigerian army has reacted to the, the article saying that it was crafted to denigrate, demonize and destabilize the Nigerian government. The government. And joining us to discuss this is Dixon Osaji, a security expert, and Sonny Maduka, a political affairs analyst. Uh, good evening to you both, uh, Mr. Osaji. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Mr. Madika, can you hear us clearly? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, yeah, I can hear you clearly. Good evening, my brother. Great to have you on the program. Um, I think I would just start with uh, Mr. Madika, who is joining us via Zoom. Um, if, for a lot of people, this came as, well, not very new. You know, it, it seems to correlate with a lot of the an analysts, you know, and some of the things that they had been saying also about the security situation in the country um, in the last couple of years. Um, do you have the same views? Do you agree with, with uh, what The Economist has put out concerning Nigeria's fight against insurgency? Well, uh, first of all, uh, the ugly situation in this country is not only about uh, military. It has translated to many facets. Uh, of course, if you look at the article in question, it didn't only address only the military. It addressed the high handedness It addressed the food crisis and food prices. He addressed the corruption aspect of it, and of course, he addressed uh, the issue about um, what you can call uh, uh, the, the mismanagement of the economy. So, if you look at that five pointer, although we are zeroing into military cells, you discover that Nigeria has always been a trouble to itself. Uh, don't forget that Economics is an international recognized magazine. And of course, uh, they've lived and they've stayed for over 170 years. And before they could postulate anything, before they could publish anything globally, they both have found and looked and checked that they are fast. And they can never be mistaken to what they've said. And vis-a-vis -vis what they've just uh, postulated and what they've told us. It's not new here. Uh, if you go through the scenarios, in August 2016, there was there was a, 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 a kind of um, alleged military cells of uh, ammunitions, and of course you know twenty officers were arrested. Four of them were officers, and they were charged. So it's not new. If you look at TV September two, that same twenty sixteen Post News came out with another allegation, where even they admitted. The present chief of uh, defense staff was in charge of the operation uh, is, uh, uh, Lafayette Aldole in Northeast. And he agreed that, yes, uh, there's some elements are betraying the army. Who are the elements? They are the ministry. So there's no exclusion. So it's not now that we are knowing it. And if you go through again, you discover that even premium uh, times on the 5th of March, came up with a report and where they say that some army officers are supplying the bandits and the insurgents, military wares, uniform, boots. It was not the, it was not a mean person that you know uh, alleged that. It was the, uh, the Zafra governor 
that allege that and you know that has weight uh it's somebody like uh, the ministry uh the the governor of uh, france cannot come out openly to say uh army is selling most of the military waste to insurgents if you even on april 2021 april of this year uh the, the, the premium news equally came out where the military speak or soldiers are accused of supplying army and they agreed there's nothing like uh, uh you know uh, saying that the economies is trying to uh debug or do whatever what they think it is no it is the truth everything is 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 at the glare sahara report on the 10th of september last month said it openly again where they said even the military hardware or uh, uh, military vehicles that we have purchased specifically for pressure in in, 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 in the northeast from innocent motors we are displayed by bandits as they, they, they are on uh, a spoil of war. So it's not a new thing. So we have been there, we have all been accused and we have all been talking. The issue is that it's not about talking. It is about how do we come out of this? And if we are going to come out of this, Um, Mr. Marco, I think uh, we may be uh, losing connection with you. So to keep the conversation going, we're going to go to Dixon Osaji now, who's a security expert. Um, in response to this, uh, the army said it is one of those deliberate falsehoods and uh, noxious narratives orchestrated by a network of detractors and a coven of dark forces working hard to adorn the Nigerian army in an unfitting garb of infamy. Um, they basically looked at every word in the dictionary to assist them with that one. Um, I also got to listen to the podcast by The Economist uh, earlier today um, and listen to what the analysts had to say. Um, do, you, do you think, you know, and not just the security aspect now, do you think that this paints the very clearest picture of what, the Nigeria, uh, what Nigeria is today? Or is this one-sided, like the army is claiming? Uh, well, for me... Uh Thank you for having me. I want to uh, appreciate all you guys do for our great nation, Nigeria. Uh, coming by what the report, the report we got from the Economist, you know, just something about um, uh, intelligence. Uh, what the economists have just given the Nigerian army is an intelligence. And when you receive an intelligence, you don't discard that intelligence immediately. You don't refute that intelligence immediately. You don't insult that intelligence immediately. You don't respond immediately. You need to go back to your drawing board. Analyze the intelligence. Find out how did these guys come about this information. Is there truly a mole within the military force? You see, it, it, it amazes me how the Nigerian army of this present time come quickly on air to respond to allegations. When the lucky shooting took place in last year in 2020, the then uh, military spokesman said it was a Photoshop. I listened to his interview. They didn't even have time to relax. They quickly responded to the allegation of Lekki Togit. Now, this is coming from an international papers. The economists have been uh, in existence even before my great-grandfather was born. And uh, I think uh, they have an integrity to protect. They have an image to protect. And they can't just come out and give out information that is not true. Definitely, they've done their findings. Now, I went through the report from the economists. They talked about soldiers' welfare, that soldiers are not well paid. They talk about diversion of soldiers' uh, 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 allowances, which are not getting to the soldiers. They talk about poor feeding. Now, let's keep aside the area of arms selling now. From those three points out, the economists gave out, I can vow for the economists that that report was true. I was a soldier, a former soldier. All what they've stated happened to me, myself, when I was in the Bakasi Peninsula in the 90s. Our funds were cut off. We were nowhere paid. We were being fed like cows. A pot of rice, one mangi, and some pieces of salt. You know, the army has lost its integrity over the time. And I had thought that all these years, the army would have, you know, developed himself to international standards. This boils down to greed, selfishness, and unprofessional conduct. I believe those reports from the economists. And I have my own ears. I have people in the military. My younger brother served in, uh, in the front line. He was shot in Chibok uh, when, uh, during the time of uh, uh, when they captured these Chibok girls. He was uh, shot by Boko Haram in Chibok 2014. Thank God he didn't die. He sustained a bastard, uh, uh, a deadly injury, I mean to say, 
his legs shattered. Are you, are you with me? What did the army do about I'm giving you a personal example now. Let's leave the economists now. Because you know, whenever you come on air, what you can do for Nigerians is to tell Nigerians the truth. Don't share things as it is. There's a problem within the military. They need to solve that problem. Release the soldier and return the family. Soldier welfare must not be gambled, must not be jeopardized. This is what is happening in the front line. What the economists have said is the truth and nothing but the truth. But on the area of arms selling and arms dealing, I will not agree with that because uh, the military is a very disciplined organization. That I believe. But there might be one or two uh, uh, bad elements in the army that perhaps is supplying, uh, are supplying the uh, insurgent arms and ammunition. We'll see some soldiers being paraded, giving most of these criminal uh, escort uh, services. So let us not write off the report of the economist. Most of what they've given out, like I earlier said, is true. On the side of arms supplied to the uh, insurgents by the military, they should investigate that before they come on uh, and okay. uh, 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 refuse right. that um, uh, information. Uh, Mr. Madikwa, can you still hear us? Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, we do. Um, I'm sure you listened clearly to uh, Dixon Osaji there. Um, interesting perspective. Um, but I, I, I want you to now talk about the response from the Nigerian uh, military. Um, this, of course, would be a little heartbreaking for everyone who, or for those who, you know, had a lot of trust in the current administration when they were coming in in 2015 and, you know, expected a lot of change that would happen. Um, so what would you say should be a better response from the Nigerian government and how much effect really will this economist, uh, you know, report really do? I think uh, the, the report has given us a, a clear way and um, probably uh, somehow how we can solve this problem. But the problem, like Osage said, is that we don't sit down to analyze issues. We jump on issues. Uh, one of the things I know as uh, somebody who got through some stress in analyzing issues, that you don't jump in. When somebody gives you a report, the first thing you do, sit down, analyze it. And of course, you know, just like Osage said, Wars, as at now, you don't win wars by propaganda or by coming to counter statements. No, you, you win wars by doing what? By trying to analyze strategies, even the ones internal and the ones external. What economists did was to give an insight into the externality of what is happening in Nigeria Army City. And it, just like I, I will say now that, you see, let me just say this because we need to be clear. Within the military right now, I'm wondering how many people are patriotic there again. Within the military now, I'm wondering how many people are not sentimental to either their tribe or religion. This is the problem. When we have such thing, we are already defeated. As of today, like he said before, military, Nigerian military is recognized everywhere. They are reckoned. And I don't think that this is subject. It's something they cannot have done with. But I think there's a problem, fundamental problem, that within the root of the military, they should be able to assume those people who are not particularly patriotic. Because the issue about national identity and ideology is very important. If you tell an American soldier, and I'm an American soldier, he's proud of it. But today, can you tell an, a Nigerian soldier, U.S. Nigerian soldier, how, how do he feel about the national pride? So this is the issue. It is not about countering whatever the economy said. I think the Nigerian military should sit down, analyze that particular uh, postulations, and see how they can see to ameliorate. More so, the welfare of the army officers must be paramount. It is very, very important. The welfare. How much, if somebody died, do they have insurance a policy to cover them up? Okay, go to the military barracks. It's not something to write home about. So these are the issues. These are people that are putting their lives in the front banner. They should be able to be treated with dignity and respect. But I don't, uh, today, I don't think so. Where can you say that a military person, according to one of them that we are interrogated, why do you sell military wares? One of the problems they say that they buy their uniforms. They buy their boots. So how do you think that somebody will not do anything when the country that have budgeted such, such, such billions is not flittering to the people who need it. And this is the problem we have in this country. Yeah. And the, the, the issue is that we must sit down as a, as a nation. Look at our national 
pride. Look at our national brand and see how we can at least do something now that it's still uh, on, a, on, on a periphery. Otherwise, uh, it's not about just saying it. The issue is that we have a rotten system right now. And it needs well, to be well, Mr. Marika, I want, right I want you to go on. I want you to go on and share your views on the other as aspect that we also brought up on the, in, in the report. Um, and also look at some of the things that the economist has pointed out. You know, like I said, I, I listened to a podcast earlier. They spoke about kidnappings. They spoke about corruption. Uh, they spoke about you yeah. know the need for you know even some of the Tucano jets that we are buying. You know, which you know they said weren't necessary, really necessary. Uh, those funds could have been used in other you know aspects. You know that would have helped the fight against insecurity. Yeah. Uh, but share your views yeah. on the other aspects that they've you know analyzed. And um, do you think? Because I spoke earlier also in the morning with the Kabira Damu, who stated that there are other positives uh, that should be pointed out with the way the Nigerian government has also acted. So do you think that we are somehow somewhere on the right track and this will just maybe take some time or we are just completely lost? Uh, to be frank with you, I think your last word is better, <laughs> is better <laughs> described. Yeah, because uh, we are lost. I'm telling you the truth. If you look at the corruption index, Everybody is aware that this country is infected with corruption. And most so, you are seeing it glaringly where somebody moved from one party to another party, his sins are forgiven, become a saint. When you look at the corruption in the oil industry, where you're talking about how much is being expended on subsidy, when you look at the transparency level of our economic indices in terms of what is spent and what is not spent, you can know. When you look at the budgeting system of this of this regime, you know it's something not to be talked about. When you look at even the database, it's not there. When you look at the cost of things right now, the inflation rate, we are talking about 18%, man, is too much. It's, it's extraordinary. When you talk about the MPC rate, interest that you get when you want to get loan, it's at 11 point. How much are you going to use? To, so when you look at all these things, you know that look, we're in trouble. Of course, our Naira is almost 500 plus. And there's no way in the economy that I've ever seen where your economy, where your currency could be devalued in such momentum. It's not done because your currency is your heart. The moment your heart starts bleeding, you're going to die. So when you look at it, the die heart issue, where People are being segregated. We have some people who be called bandits instead of calling them terrorists. We have some people who are called terrorists even when they are saying, oh, we are not terrorists. So there's a lot of falsehood in this nation. And until sincerity come on board, we are going to still go round and round and keep talking the same thing and never move forward. Now, let me go to the, why are we having this problem? We are having this problem because of nepotism. It's not, we don't practice merit here. There's no meritocracy. People are put in a place based on who you know, your tribe, your religion. It's not done that way. Look at the economy of Singapore. Look at the economy of uh, Malaysia. Look at the economy of the Africa and the Asian Tigers, Japan. It is either you are there or you're not there. And nobody's going to put you to a place that you know you cannot perform. Performance is what is assumed. And that is why I, I talked about our budget system. We are supposed to be operating performance program budgeting system where your performance to every budget is tied to a project. But today we keep on building the same road like this Ibado, Lagos road. It's every year, almost since I've right, been in Lagos. Lagos. There's no year that you don't see Bilosega on it. You keep asking how much is budgeted on this road. So this is the problem we're having. We must tell ourselves the truth and come to round table and see how we can champion and of course see how we can get economists that are core to what is development. As right. of today, nothing is <laughs> All right. All right. Hold on, Mr. Maduka. Um, one of the, the things that we hope that we can achieve, you know, with you know, every of these conversations is some level of hope. Um, analyze some of these discussions and then see if there's really any you know, light at the end of the tunnel, um, maybe in the near future, maybe in the next decade. Um, Mr. Sagi, I'm, I'm going to come back to you now to speak about the, the handling you know, and the way that the current administration... Listen, every time that we have you know, critics like this, um, like you said, the very first thing that the government does is, you know, jump in and, you know, say that they're trying to defame, you know, trying to pull the government down, you know, and some of all of that. Um, do you think that the current administration was, um, it, what, which word would you say fits best with the way that the country has been run in the last six to seven years? Um, is it, you know, uninterested, underprepared, or overwhelmed with Nigeria's challenges? Well, the general is missing in action. 
Nigeria is missing. And uh, I would like uh, our government to bring back Nigeria. Nigeria is missing in action. There is a phrase in the National Assembly, that, uh, in the National uh, Anthem, that states that uh, the labor of our heroes past shall never be in vain. And each time and now, we have our leaders in the National Assembly, State Assembly, Government House, military facilities, singing the National Anthem, anthem every day. That line that says, the labor of our heroes past shall never be in vain, to serve with heart and might, one nation bound, is an oath. And every day, our leaders take this oath and abuse the oath. They, don't even, they, they are not even afraid to die of that oath taking. The National Pledge is an oath. If we don't rise up to defend Nigeria, I'm afraid uh, Nigeria will be the first three most dangerous country in the world. As it stands, when you go into the Global Peace Index, Nigeria is the 132 most peaceful country in the world. On the reversal, Nigeria is the, most, is the first 15 most dangerous country in the world. And here, when we talk about security, in totality, security is the freedom from danger. Now, no investor will want to come to a country where the security application is very porous. The porosity of our national borders have sold us out many times. I can remember many times, not one, not 10, not 20, not 100 times, Plus TV Africa has discussed the national borders of Nigeria. One thing I believe, our leaders, they don't watch television. If they watch television and listen to radio, they would have been getting solutions from analysts, both political analysts, social analysts, security analysts, because the whole essence of this analysis is to criticize constructively and proffer solutions. I'm not a destructive criti critics, uh, uh, analyst. I'm a constructive analyst. I tell you what the problem is. I'm pro for solution. But our country, we're not ready to take this solution. This border on leadership brutality. Our leaders have failed us. With all honesty, they have failed us. And 2023 is coming. We've seen some politicians who vow with their life that they'd rather die than to cross carpets. At the end of the day, they swallowed that words and they cross carpeted. Our, uh, our youths must remember that 2023 is coming. That is the right time. We need to pick or select the right leaders that will take Nigeria or that will bring back Nigeria because we need to bring back Nigeria before we take Nigeria to the promised land. Nigeria is missing in action. In any given time, our names on the papers, on the international committee, negative, negative, negative. Now, just what we call the red flag. Every country appreciates the red flag. What is the red flag? The red flag are a group of people, or whatever the case may be, opponents that criticize government. Government must start looking at criticism as an avenue for them to develop this great nation. Whenever you see a report, don't condemn that report. That's where intelligence comes to play. What the Nigerian army should be doing, or what the military should be doing, is to thank the economists for that report, not to criticize the economists. Tell them, thank you. We've seen this report. We are going, to the, we are going back to the drawing board. We will institute or constitute a board of inquiry to find out or inquire about these allegations and find out what is really happening in the battlefield. For me, we will hold our leader responsible, hold our president responsible, hold our governors responsible, and we must also stop centralizing our problem. Because the reason why I say we should stop centralizing our problem is that state governors must also be held accountable. Any, inc any incident that transpires, whatever the case may be, we must not, we, we must not push it to Abuja. We must start holding our state governors accountable because they are receiving the security votes. Every blessed time and day, they are receiving the security votes. What are they doing with these security votes? What are they doing about the jobless youth? Most of our youth are jobless here in Nigeria. Unemployment brutality. What is the government doing about unemployment brutality? The spate of kidnapping is on the rise. At the arrest of Evans, kidnap market took a boom because Evans was, you know, introduced as a billionaire kidnapper. And that's why I've advised the Nigerian police to be very careful in parading of suspects. Each time you parade a suspect and you ask the suspect to tell the world how he or she carried out his crime, you are enlisting more criminals you know, to the criminal market. So I, am, I appreciate the Lagos State Government. They've uh, uh, stopped the parading of suspects uh, uh, from the uh, State House of Assembly. Then we should also be looking at social, social development and social contracts. Our government has breached this social contract for so long. Bridging the social contract in the sense that they are supposed to give you an eye education. They are supposed to give you an eye good road. I, I drove down here all the way from the mainland. 
I know the axes are passed through. Gallops everywhere. They're supposed to give us electricity 24-7. Those are social contracts. In turn, you and I, we will obey the government. We respect the government. We are law abiding. So the government has been bridging the social contract and they are expecting Nigerians to be law abiding. It doesn't work that way. And that is why an average American will want to die for, for, for the state of America. An average UK citizen will want to die for the state of UK, of United Kingdom, simply because the government started taking care of them while they were still young and they kept taking care of them to the university yeah. and other fora. So what I would advise the government is that they need to go back to the drawing board, analyze what the problem is in Nigeria and start listening to analysts. All right, Sonny Maduka, do we still have you? I'm with you, I'm with you. All right, um, you can um, have uh, quick statements to uh, wrap up the conversation. If you can do it in a minute, we'll pre appreciate it. Okay, I just want to give a phrase. I said that wars are not won by modern equipment, propaganda, armory, logistics, but by the patriotic zeal of the people, of the soldiers, and that is devoid of religious, tribal sentiments. If we can do this and put into perspective the idea about citizenship, that even a leader should see himself as a citizen first, not as a boss, we can get it right. But as of today, we have something we call them and we. So, there's a dichotomy, and that dichotomy needs to be closed down. If it can be closed down by bringing us such things that uh, Osage just said about social contract, it will be better. But unfortunately, I have to say this. I'm not uh, trying to uh, dampen anybody's spirit, but I need to say this. Our constitution has messed up this. If a governor built a road for you, thank him. Because even in that constitution, it didn't tell you that a governor must build a road for you. A governor is not accountable to you. And that's why he can, they can take the, the vote, the security vote, and spend it, and nobody asks questions. Nobody does that. This is, a, this is a common way of every Nigerian. Every money you spend, even as a governor, as a chairman, or whatever you are, as a president, you are accountable to the citizens. And when we start accounting to the citizens, then Nigeria will stand to see the benefit of democracy vis-a-vis -vis -vis the merit to every appointment in everywhere we are. Thank you. All right. And, uh, of course, uh, looking forward to seeing a better response uh, from the Nigerian government to the uh, report by The Economist. And not just response on paper, but response in, you know, the way that they, you know, handle government, government and governance uh, going forward. Sonny Maduka, thank you so much yeah. for your time this evening. Thank you uh, very appreciate much. It. And I of course, appreciate it. Uh, Dixon Osage, thank you also for your time and um, always interested in speaking with you. Thank you for having me. And of course, uh, thank you for staying with us. Coming up next in Fast Politics, President Buhari announces that he could grant a pardon to Ken Saruwiwa and others who were accused of murdering four Ogoni chiefs. We'll take a short break and we'll be back.